How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to my shop. Now I'll start by saying I always like when really interesting comments uh, get added to videos and in this case uh, a viewer left this comment about the possibility of using a laser to make stencils. Now that is an interesting topic and there's a number of ways you can do this. So in this video what I want to do is walk you through a couple of techniques that I've used in the past on creating your own stencils and we'll start with something simple and we'll work to something a little more complicated and uh, hopefully you can get something useful out of this. So let's get going. All right, so for this very first one, we'll start with something really simple and uh, that will be uh, a monochrome image and that would be something that is uh, some color everywhere where there's a hole in your stencil, you're gonna paint and anything where there is no hole, you're just gonna leave it as what the natural material color is. So what we'll do is we'll start with something really obvious and simple like a compass and uh, there's certainly millions of these here. Uh, here's a decent one here. And all I'm gonna do is, is just copy this image the way it is here. And, uh, and I'll pop over into Inkscape. Now you could use any vector drawing program. Uh, I just use Inkscape because it's free. So it's something I can easily recommend to people. And I'll paste it in there. And now what we need to do, this is a bitmap. So what we need to do is turn this into vectors. And the way we're gonna do that in Inkscape is we're gonna say trace a bitmap and uh, we'll do an update here and see what it looks like. And that's pretty good just the way it is. And we'll just grab that and move it away. Now you'll notice there's now two of these things and they look exactly the same. So we need to know if you wanna find out which one is the vector. Uh, in Inkscape, you can select the vector node tool here. And when you select, you'll see all kinds of dots. Whereas in this one, you just see the outline. So this one is the non-vector. This is the original image. And uh, we can delete that one. And so now we have this, this vector diagram and uh, all we have to do is save it and uh, we'll load it into our laser software. And uh, you can see I already had one saved here, but I'll do it again, just so you know I'm not, I'm not cooking the books. Now I'll use uh, Lightburn here, but this will work with any laser software. My, my Muse 3D is still set up to cut, to cut tumblers, so uh, I, it's, I can't really do anything with it. So what we'll do is we'll load that image in, and if I just grab it here from, from where I stored it, you can see there's the image, and we'll just stick it on, on the paper here. Now what I'm gonna do is cut this onto a piece of cardstock, but it's bigger cardstock. It's 12 by 12 inches or 30 by 30 centimeters. Uh, and I know the size of it, so I'll, I'll make it the right size and not too big. So that's 265, uh, that's good enough. And we'll stick it on there. And all I really need to do now, since this is cardstock, we can go really fast on this. So we could probably, on my 90 watt laser, we could go 300 millimeter per second. And uh, we don't actually need much power, but uh, you know, we could start with, well, maybe 40% power and cut that out. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So to test my stencil, I just have a piece of cardboard here and here's my stencil and you can see it came out very nice. Let me just get rid of some of the dirt here. Once you have it there in place, you can just tape it down with some blue tape. And what I'll do is also make sure the centers are pressed down well. I don't want any anything to leak underneath my stencil. And and there we go. 
Next, we'll just give it a quick paint job. All right, so I've elected to paint my compass black because that's normally how these things look. And I have a paint sheet down. Now you do, with some paints, you do want to make sure you're in a, in a good ventilated area. My shop is well ventilated, so it's not really an issue. And we'll just... Now, normally you would let this sit and dry, but uh, I'm, as usual, in a bit of a rush here, so... What I'll do is peel the tape off. And of course it did move a bit, but that's okay. Because my paint is almost dry on cardboard and, and there we go. A half decent compass in five minutes. All right, for the more advanced one, we're gonna do something that's multicolor, and I'll use my, my logo for, for uh, my own company. And you can see I have a number of layers. This started all as a single SVG file with all, all, everything on a single layer. Uh, what I did was break it down by color, and I'll turn off things here to start. So what I have in the initial one is what I call the base. This is really a, a jig that we're gonna use. And you can see there's holes in the corners and they're designed to, to have three millimeter screws threaded into them to act as pins. And then the blue is the crosshairs for the center lines. If you put a piece on here and you want it to be perfectly centered, you can use that. Uh, I usually make jigs like this. Next is, is the template itself and this will be the certainly the what the actual material looks like so we'll cut one of these out with nothing on it which will be the background and these holes here are actually a little bigger than three millimeters so that they slide onto those pins that we create in the jig and then uh, we'll do a, a layer for each individual color so i'll cut out a piece that looks like this with a pie slice in it and we'll we'll put that onto the jig and paint it yellow and then we'll do the green which is a green rectangle and a pie symbol and then we'll put the white text on top of it. And the reason for this, even though the background's going to start as white, is uh, if you look at how the stencil works, if it, there's no way, because this is a rectangle and letters cut into it, there's no way to get this cut out without all these letters falling out. So uh, you have to do it in two steps. And in this case, you can see the D where we had this standalone independent center. Uh, I had to put a couple of attachments on here and, and later on you can just take a, in this case, a white paintbrush and just paint those out if you want or you can leave them in there. It depends on what your stencil looks like. And then last I'll paint the black and then when it all gets turned on it'll look like this when it's finished. Now I'm going to use spray paint so there'll be overspray and whatnot here but if you're creating stencils, if they're for any kind of quality purposes as opposed to just spraying onto the side of a box then you're probably going to use a paintbrush and be a little more diligent. Uh, so I'll have overspray and it'll be a little fuzzy, just like the compass was. The point of my video here isn't uh, to show you how good I can create a stencil, it's how to make stencils. Uh, so we'll keep focused on that. Anyway, let's, let's get this cut out and all these pieces cut out and uh, I'll start painting it up.
right, so we're ready to start painting. I've got all of my templates here. I've got my piece of material, which I've painted white already. So the primary background is white. And my, my jig, which I'm just gonna slide the material onto. And my paint. And the first thing we're gonna do is paint the, the pie in the background. Now, you might want to to tape these down a bit to make sure that your stencil doesn't move. And it'll be a bit of an interesting challenge to paint, put this one down. But Okay, so I've taped it down a bit. And because I'm, I'm, I'm painting with a spray can, it's gonna be pretty ham-fisted, but uh, if, you, if you are doing this, you wanna paint pretty much straight down so you don't get overspray underneath the, the sides. And we'll just do a very light coat. And we may do two coats later. So there we go. And we could, we could leave it on there, but I'm gonna actually take it off. In part, so we can see what it looks like. And it actually looks pretty good. So now we'll just let that dry and then we'll do uh, subsequent colors. All right, so there you go. You saw how easy it was to, to create a stencil to make either a, a monochrome image or uh, using a jig uh, and several stencils, a multicolor image. And uh, hopefully that answers the question. So uh, as always, I'll put a video up in the corner here and uh, we'll wind the video down. And so get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.